So you had mentioned to me that you think potentially you are in with a second wave. I wouldn't say that for sure, but I was either in the second or third. I'm pretty sure it wasn't in the first. But they, all, they said we, we was in the second wave, is what they, they told me. I, that's like some guys might have said they was in the first wave. Well, I didn't say it because I didn't think I was. I thought I was in the second wave. And I was, that's what I was told. When you're going into that beach, what's running through your mind? I'm scared to death. He back to me wasn't scared, and that's stupid. They're lying. Well, there's 119 of us. And when the boat went in there, he hit the sand, and the back dropped out. So that's how we got out. They trained us in England. You can't help nobody during the invasion. I thought, oh, I was really upset. But I said, I'll help them. We didn't have no hands because you water this deep. You had your rifle up here, you know, you can't, you can't put your, your rifle in the water. And so I, I, I mean, it was just, that water was red as blood, and the guys were hollering to help me. I'm married. I got kids. You couldn't do nothing. Nothing. I used to go in my basement right here and cry. And I know I was a grown man. But I did D-Day, and so uh, my wife finally caught me. One day she come down there, what are you crying about? Of course, I told her, you know. Right in the landing, I know we lost maybe 20 guys out of our company. Maybe more, I, 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 I couldn't count them, you know. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of them killed. There'll never be another war like that, though. Never. I'm... Do you remember some of the guys that were with you in the LST? Oh, or... yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that water, people wouldn't believe how it, that water was, of course, there's a bombing and strafing, and you're just lucky you got on the land. Anybody tell you they weren't scared and something like that, or they're stupid. But it, then once you got on the beach, it wasn't that bad. Of course, they're still shelling and, you know, bombing and that. But we got through it some way. <laughs> so what were the Germans like? Uh, what, what were they hiding in? Uh, what was well, their... On up in is is hiding in caves. I mean, uh, on up through uh, uh, all up through Germany, they had pill boxes. They called them. Mm -hmm. or that's what I called them. I guess that's what they mean. Uh, this it get in there. You couldn't. You couldn't do nothing. I never did get in. Go into one of them. Some of the guys went, went in. I was. When you guys started to press forward, what you remember some of the, 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 the skirmishes or what you guys were involved in those first few nights? Well, yeah, what you do, did then when we got, uh, you had what you call hedge rows, just like that over on these different hedges. Mm -hmm. And that's oh, maybe a half as high as that wall is there, but you couldn't, you couldn't. Matter of fact, me and this guy's in this foxhole, and one of them, where's that close to him? One of them threw a grenade across, and it went right, and he grabbed it and threw it out, and I'm glad he did, because it had killed both of us. <laughs> right in the foxhole. And I, I got off the right of bed, and I've always blamed that for it. Because we, you know, in a foxhole, you lay there, in the morning, about two o'clock, your water starts leaking, and you got to get up and dig another one or get wet. Mm -hmm. So, how many hedgerows did you guys have to go through? Was it? Well, 
this, like maybe from here to Main Street. No, it wasn't that far apart. Maybe from here to Hank, from here to Main Street down there. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't, you couldn't drive nothing up over them, you know. I don't know. I got a place there on my foot. It was shrapnel, and my, I told my buddy, I said, where are we getting water at? He said, we ain't been in no water. I said, well, I got water in my boot. I tucked tuck my boot off. Back then, they issued you boots. It's full of blood. It's placed right there. It's shrapnel, maybe. And now that's probably how scared I was that I didn't feel it. I don't know. So but I finally got to, I didn't care. You know, I guess that's the way you get. I finally got to, my goodness, if I die tomorrow, I'll die. I don't worry about it. Where did you say your brother got killed at? Sherbert, sure, France. In a nap or two. But CO told me he got killed. He was what they call the German's 88. You ever talk to a World War II veteran? If he don't know what a, a German 88 means, he wasn't there. What is a German 88? It's a big, it's a, uh, it's a artillery, the big shell, you know, when they'd hit. They'd explode and shrapnel would go all over. You know what shrapnel is? Mm -hmm. Little pieces of steel. That are in that shell designed to mm -hmm. tear people up. Yeah. Our planes killed a lot of our guys. Our, our own planes. Because back then, you know, they didn't have all the technology they got now. They... You know, they call back for them to strafe this place. By the time they get the message back our we'd be moved up. They'd strafe us. When we'd hear them coming, we'd hit the ditch. And, of course, it wasn't their fault, really. But now, they got all the radio stuff, you know. Back then, you didn't have all that. It was, it was terrible. They strafed us. One job I didn't like when the sniper was in a tree. My buddy, we, we was pretty, me and him was pretty close. He'd say, it's your turn. Of course, you had to shoot into that. You would, couldn't see him. Shoot into the tree. And fall out. Well, did you encounter uh, much, outside of that, were there a lot of snipers that you guys had to yeah, fish out? Was, they had a lot of snipers, yeah. Not, not a, uh, oh, I don't know. I know me and him would take turns, you know. Yeah. Is this the one that, that the buddy you're talking about was a Scott uh, Dawson or something like that? Your one buddy? That you, what was his name again? Scotty Dawson. Scotty Dawson. So he he was your companion through. Yeah, pretty much. We was pretty close. Yeah. So, so you landed with him and you fought through five campaigns. Yeah. yeah. And made I it up. I five major campaigns. Just tell you that on that. Yes, sir. Well, I can't remember the names of them, right? But we went to a lot of towns. And like when we'd take a town, why would we get to sleep in that town that night? And I got Did you guys ever liberate any concentration camps? No, we, we was close to, we was close to a couple, and uh, you know the way that, the way those, the way those people were murdered is terrible. Could you smell the concentration camps? Oh yeah, that's what I say, I can always remember that smell. If I hear it, smell it today, I don't know. That's terrible. Little kids and women and when you guys first realized or was close to one of those, what'd you think? What what went through your mind? 
Well, you just can hardly believe it, you know, that this happened. But it did. Did it change you at all like when you when you found when you re first realized I guess or smelled that or and knew that it was happening? Did you did it anger you at all? Oh yeah, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to kill them. <laughs> when I went in, I wish I'd have went in the uh, Navy mm -hmm. because. They don't freeze. Of course, they're in danger too, you know. Uh, I often wished I had to went in there because I like to throw death in the Battle of Bulge. I'll tell you one thing, I got my hands and feet frozen. That's how, I, I don't know what degree it was, but I'll tell you one thing, it was cold. So a lot of people couldn't don't believe it. You slept out in it. <clears throat> you know how cold it gets here. About that. Yeah. So that, I, I, from what I understand, that the Germans had a large counterattack. Uh, was it in the Ardennes? Oh, they, yeah, well, yeah, they had, they had counterattacks. Oh, yeah. But didn't do them much good. Our outfit. I started to cut the truck up. Big truck sitting there, and I, and I said, You know how to start that? Yeah. Well, I drove, you know, so a lot. I, mm -hmm. Mechanically, I was pretty much. So I got in it and started. And we left it run. We got under it. Snow was, it was cold. I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe how cold it was. And I know people don't believe that here, that you slept out in. Well, you never had the clothes like they got now. You know, they got warm mittens and that. We never had nothing like that. But anyway, it ran out of fuel about five o'clock in the morning. And so I said, what do we do now? My buddy, he said, Scott Dawson was his name. He said, we freeze, you dumbass. You can't put that in there. But you freeze. <laughs> so that same day, the, the, this town that evacuated that we took, I can't remember the name of it, but it wasn't a big town, not like this town. And the first sergeant said, hunt you, hunt you a house. So me and this one guy that I slept on a truck with, uh, there's a whole bunch of houses there, so we just chose one. We went in, of course, to Jack. I went in the basement and got in her wine. <laughs> yeah. I come upstairs, of course, I brought a big jug up. This wine, and uh, of course my buddy, he drank some of it about two o'clock in the morning. I got thirsty for water. There, there are no lights in there now, or no heat or nothing. But we wouldn't. We was in the bed together, snooched up to each other. We had cover, and it's dry. That tickled the heck out of us. And so I, I went in the kitchen, get me a drink of water, and they had a pump. You had to pump, no electric. So I, I struck a match, and there said this. German soldier, he was a one of Hitler's SS troops with a rifle across his lap. So I grabbed the rifle right away. And he come his hollering, comrade, comrade. That meant he wanted to give up, which I was kind of happy about that. But he passed by our bed near that couch. It's dark, you know, he didn't, he didn't. And he, I don't think he had any intention of killing us. But anyway, we tied him up, didn't mistreat him or nothing. I, I remember hollering, hey, come in here, we got company. And the guy got up coming, he says, where'd, he get, where'd you get him? I've never got him, he's sitting in his chair. So the next morning, I turned him into the mess sergeant. 
the mess sergeant said, uh, just a minute, and he went and got a pick and a shovel. About this. Uh, he said, take him out there and make him dig a hole. And I said, what the hell are you going to do, kill him? He said, no, you dumb a double S. He said, we bury our garbage. And I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And the little guy dug a hole, and he's showing me pictures of his family. He had two or three little kids. And they kept him for about over a month to, to do that, wash pots and pans. And, and of course, he had it made. That's what he wanted. And of course, I, they finally sent him on to prison, you know. Yeah. And uh, so uh, every time he'd see me, he'd start laughing, pointing his finger. And, and I thought a lot about that when I got back in the States. That guy would have ran. I, I wouldn't have shot him in the back. I don't care. But coming at you, I could care less. Mm -hmm. But to shoot a guy in the back, I don't know what I did that. I might have shot him in the leg. I might have let him go and thrown him. He got away. <laughs> At one time, I told you we got surrounded. I think maybe two days or something. But I thought they lined us all up, and I thought they was going to kill us. And they didn't. They counterattacked. They got us. I think it's two or three days. I know two days. I know I got awful dang hungry. All they, all they give them prisoners is, is, is land burger and cheese, and I don't like that. Yeah. So you saying that you guys got surrounded? Did you get captured, or that you well, said? Well, pretty much. I mean, they didn't take us. They just surrounded us, and we stayed. Where we was at till they count we knew they was gonna counter attack and get us. Mm -hmm. Or we thought they was. How'd you guys get out of that predicament? Uh we just when they counterattacked us why well, they they took took us they well, back, back overnight, uh they they pulled you back to where you get some rest. You never got much rest. Or, yeah. I don't know. I get over this. I just think it's the Germans after things killed. So when you after the war was over, did you have to stay in occupation mode at all? Did you have to stay in occupied Germany at all, or did they ship you right home? No, I tell you what happened. It's another story. When the war was over. At dinner, at supper, I call it, no company commander got up. And he said, we got two guys. He's going to fly to the United States. We got out. We had the high. Me and this same guy, Scotty. We had the highest points in the uh, They let you out on a point system. I don't think you, you, I know you've read about that. They let you out on a point system, and me and him had the high points. Said they're gonna tomorrow. They're gonna turn their stuff in. I said I ain't flying. He said I ain't either. So they got pissed off at us because we wouldn't fly home, and they made us all refugee. <laughs> He's back on the autobound. I don't know if you ever heard of the autobound. Mm-hmm. We had to haul refugees back on that with them two and a half ton deuces, trucks. So I was about, I'd have got home at least 30 days before if I'd have flew, but I was afraid to fly. I didn't want to fly after going through all that shit. Mm -hmm. my, my, like I told you, my son went, went to serve, and that's all he'd done. Of course, when I went in, you know, they all get in boxcars and like a bunch of cows. And, uh, any way you, they could get you there. Yeah. Some cheap way. So when you got home, 
and you get to lay down in your bed for the first night since you were gone, what was running through your mind? Oh my God. I was laying there probably crying, to tell you the truth. I was so happy. Yeah. I'm, I don't know if they, I mean, I can't remember, but I know one thing. I was tickled to have Cliff to get home. And I, of course, I had to sit up late that night with my mother and dad. But, uh, I don't know. I just didn't know. I know I never did. Did you ever think that you just weren't going to make it? Huh? Did you ever think that you weren't going to make it? Like, when you got back home, you're just saying, I can't believe, you know, did you ever think that you're just like, I can't believe I made it home well, after all that? I mean, that's what you think. The day before you jump off, they call it, you think, well, tomorrow I die. I mean, you get, you get to thinking that. And you get to, you don't care. Or I did. I just figured I was going to go the next day. Next, not the same thing. Not the same thing. Got by the day. I didn't want to go home. I'll, after all that time. Because I didn't want to face my parents because my brother got killed, you know. And I, I remember I hung around that little town maybe two or three hours before I'd go on home. But I finally went. Uh, you know, I, I can't explain it. I just didn't want to face my parents. I know this, you know. It broke down about my brother. 